Hey guys, God bless. Welcome back to Twist and Shout. I am Shar, and today is Bible Plus T. It is the very first Bible Plus T of the year, and I cannot be more grateful that God has brought me through another year. Happy New Year to anyone who has been MIA off social media. I understand completely there is a time and place for everything, and I myself have been feeling led off to be less active on social media and this active, so I completely understand. But if you are here, God bless you, welcome. I have to be transparent. I kind of put Bible plus T in the back burner because I am now also starting Bible studies. But you know, you you I have to be persistent, right? And I have to do what the Lord wants me to do. So I was in my personal reading because y'all know I'm trying to read through the Bible. So I finished Genesis already. I'm in Exodus and I'm, you know, rediscovering some jewels. And I want to share with you guys and encourage someone that may be watching. And I know it blessed me and encouraged me. But uh, let me go ahead into the scriptures and then I'll talk some more. Um, I will be coming from Genesis chapter three. And... Um, let me start with verse 11, and then I'm, I'm going to be all over the place, so just bear with me. And this is the NIV version. I'm just going to zoom in so you guys can read along with me if you don't have a Bible. Um, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your father has sent me to you. And they ask, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. I just want to stop and say, first of all, my husband preached this message and it blew my mind because it's like, yo, I think we do not understand the significance of God saying, I am who I am. That is such a profound, authoritative statement like, I am. That's all you need to know is that I am. I exist. I am present. I am all-knowing. I am all-powerful. I am. I am God. Like, blew my mind because I'm reading this again in my own personal studies. And it's like, we do not understand how big of a message that alone is. I am. And just to bring it more relative, because I know if you're like me, you're like, you know, get, get to the nitty gritty, right? So in life, right, we have issues, we have circumstances, like y'all know with the situation with my mom, like this scripture also was resonating in me, like, yo, I am a doctor. I am a healer. I am God alone. Like you just, whatever your situation, whatever your circumstances, whatever's going on with you, I am has brought me through this. He can bring me through that. And Moses being a human, his human self, excuse me for moving a tripod. You know, who, who am I supposed to say sent me again? Because... You know, I'm just getting to know you, my, you know, like, you know, so what was your name again? And God's like, I am. I am sent you. I am in control. I am God. Like, that is so significant to me. Um, And then we're going to scoot down here where, oh, I guess we're going to the next page, actually. Okay. Let's go to chapter four, verse 10. Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent or eloquent, however you want to pronounce it. Y'all know I'm country, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. 
And y'all know that my biggest thing with God was wrestling, trying to, you know, transition from just talking about my business and hair was God, I, I definitely have the passion in me. I, I want to speak your word. I want to talk to people about God, but I am slow in speech. And for me, is my mind moves a whole lot faster than my mouth does. And sometimes it doesn't even make sense. So I've learned to slow down. So in the process, I've learned to discipline myself and to create order as God give it to me. And Moses was plainly saying, Lord, I can't even talk. And that's what I made it relatable to me. Like, I'm not trying to take away from whatever's going on with him because people were saying that he, he probably had a stuttering problem because that's what they normally comprehend to, you know, be slow in speech. Like your mouth can't keep up with your mind. And I stutter sometimes. I get stuck. My husband does it. Like I have a son who does it. We all do, but in the same token, even through my son, thank you, Jesus, when he goes to express himself um, in the Bible, what he learned or what he heard, it is so beautiful and so powerful that you will not even think will come from a 12-year-old. And my husband, because he did not think that he was going to be a pastor because it looked like, yeah, I can understand this and I can study this myself, but as far as bringing this forth to people, that's the whole other scenario or circumstance. But anyway, um, chapter where we are, 11, I'm sorry, verse 11, the Lord said to him, who gave human beings their, their mouths, who makes them deaf and mute, who gives them sight or makes them blind. It is not I, the Lord. Now go, I will help you speak and I will teach you what to say. So this is something I had to repent on very, very recently. I'm talking about like right before I even got up here and talked to you guys. And I'm sorry, I didn't even change my page over, but I was reading over here if you want to see it. But um, I, like many others, and no, I, I would not even, um, I don't want to give someone credit for telling me or teaching me something wrong because I feel like if God gave me the means and availability to get it right, then God is just, and he is all knowing, all powerful still. Like, even though we as humans fall short, he does not. And, but anyway, I was kind of influenced to think that, uh, those type of things, mental illness and things come from Satan, they're satanic. And right here, and if someone's watching and someone has a means to a commentary or something or something, or a guy has talked to you, let me know. But I always was kind of conditioned to think that mental illness and things that are abnormal come from Satan. And we hear right here that God himself said, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? It is not I, the Lord. He plainly is saying, hey, I make people how I want to make them when I make them. So, like I said, I felt convicted because I'm like, wow, we give Satan so much authority and power that does not even belong to him. And we have to stop that. And yes, it's probably, I guess it kind of made sense in, to us emotionally wise that, okay, if somebody has an illness or issue, they have a stuttering problem, they're deaf, they're mute, they're blind, they're lame, that they're missing a, a foot, arm, leg, or cleft palate, whatever the situation is, it kind of makes sense to us that because these things are presented as bad, that they must come from Satan, right? It just makes logical sense and it makes sense with our emotions because we are in our flesh. But we also understand that, thank you, Holy Spirit, that, um, and thank God for having two phones, so I can go ahead and try to find this very quickly. Um, Holy Spirit just gave me a scripture in, I think it's Matthew. I'm going to try to do two things at one time, so sorry, you guys, but um, where uh, the disciples asked Jesus, right? They was talking to Jesus about, um, I believe the man was blind and they was like, okay, who sinned? Him or his parents? Because somebody had to sin. Somebody had to do something wrong. Some evil has to be somewhere, somehow in order for this man to have been blind. And Jesus came back and said, 
how can how can we point a finger if this man was blind from birth, right? Because that will eliminate him. Before he could even sin, he was blind. So that eliminates him. So let me go to the scripture right quick. Um, disciples asked Jesus, who sinned? Bear with me, y'all. Come on, internet. But, okay, that's John 9, okay. John 9 and 2. All right, so let's let's get out over here right quick. John 9 and 2. John 9 and 2. John 9 and 2. John 9 and 2. And like I said, if anybody has any perspective on this, please let me know. But I thank God for. All right, here we go. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. So they let you know off gate he was blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So them having their eyesight, they could see they was acknowledging or referencing blindness to sin that somebody must have sinned. And Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it, as it is day, we must do the works for him. Sorry, excuse me, the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So pretty much projecting also that there will be an end of the world. Like there will be a moment where everything will be destroyed. But as of right now, Jesus is the light, he is the way, and he is trying to teach people as he comes along. And like I said, right where they're asking him, like, somebody must have sinned, right? That's what makes sense to us. Somebody did something wrong. There got to be some type of generational curse or something going on. But Jesus plainly said that for this moment, and mind you, can you imagine, like, you're blind your whole life, your whole life. And then God says, all right. At 30 years old, I'm going to use you as an example to you're blind. I'm going to heal you and make you see through Jesus for this very moment so that somebody can believe 30 years after you've been born. Can you imagine that? Blows your mind, right? But that just shows you how all knowing and powerful God is and how his will is perfect. So when we go back to Exodus with Moses he had a speech problem, but God used him to speak and say these things that came from the Lord because what he says is perfect. And he used an imperfect vessel to get the job done and have his will projected so that we focus on the fact that, okay, this man who has a problem is speaking of perfect justice and perfect authority that does not belong to him, but the one who works through him, which would be God, the Holy Spirit. I find it so fascinating and such a blessing because, again, we just have to be careful, y'all. We have to be extremely careful about what kind of authority and what kind of power we give to Satan that does not belong to him. So I encourage you to obviously continue reading. You know, you if you know the story, you know that uh, I guess as a human comfort, he said, all right, take your brother Aaron with you. He can talk. It's nothing wrong with his speech. So now what's your excuse? Because God made up his mind. I'm going to use you whether you're fully cooperative or not. But we all know that Moses not only was cooperative in that scene, but he did, in fact, led the people up out of Egypt and into the promised land. Um. So I'm going to just stop right there because I don't want to take too much of your time. But isn't God good? I just want to leave that. I am. I am created me. <laughs> I am gave me the ability to speak his word and to use me. He chose me. So whatever, again, I encourage you, whatever you're going through, whatever's happening in your life, I am. I love you guys. God bless. Take care. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.